properties to justify the solution. So before we begin, one question that's commonly asked is how are solutions to equations expressed? And one way that equations are expressed, expressed is called set notation. So this is just one of the many ways that answers are represented for equations. And so set notation is essentially um, x or all elements of x such that x equals some number, right? So the brackets represent the set of, in this case, x, because maybe that is the variable in the equation. And the, the letter x is, is given here um, to define the collection. And the, the, bra the bar here is such that And the, the stuff to the right of the bar is kind of like the rules, rules or conditions of the set. So an example would be if our solution was x equals 3, we would put this in set notation. We would say, okay, the variable, we're defining the collection or the element is x such that x equals 3. This is the rule for or, or the conditions of the set where where the answer is x equals 3. So this is kind of what set notation is. Um, it is a collection of things that provides a description of its elements and then gives you some sort of rule or condition for that set. So we'll be writing our answers in set notation today. All right, first example for today. We have find the value that makes the two expressions equal each other type the solution as an equation in set notation. So we'll be typing our solutions in set notation. So step one is to identify the variable expression. And you're looking at the equation and you see on the left side we've got 0.8n minus 1.5n equals and then the right expression 5.78 plus 2.7n. So if we're identifying the variable expression we've got variables on both sides. We've got an n variable on the left side, actually, we've got two of them. And we've got an n variable on the right side. And so our first step is to identify or create what side is going to be our variable expression and what side is going to be our number expression. So our first step is to denote the variable side slash the number side. So we're we're pretty much going to decide what side we're going to keep the variable on and what side we're going to keep our numbers on. So I'm going to denote the left side to be the side that we keep the variable on, making the right e expression the side that we keep the numbers on. So anything on the variable expression that is a variable stays, all numbers go, and then for the number expressions, all variables must go. So our, our second step is to simplify the equation and this is done by either distributing or combining like terms. So on the left side or on our variable side, we can simplify the like terms. We've got like terms of 0.8n and negative 0.15n. So I'm going to use a um, calculator to combine these like terms. Okay, I punch them in the calculator. I hit enter, I get negative 0.7. So we get negative 0 0.7 when we combine these, and we got to make sure we include the variable because we're combining like terms that have a variable. And then here we don't have any like terms. Uh, we've got a number, and we've got a variable. These are not the same thing, so we cannot combine them, so we can just bring them down. There was nothing to distribute in this particular problem, so we're good. So now we've got an equation that is fully simplified. The left expression is simplified. The right is, is as simple as we can get. And so now we're going to start to solve. So step three, solve by undoing the variable in the solve by undoing the variable in the number expression and the numbers in the variable expression. So I'm going to rewrite it over here. We've got negative 0.7n equals 5.78 plus 2.7n and we said that this was going to be our variable side so this is our number side. So there's numbers that we can eliminate on the variable side, but let's start by eliminating the variable on the number side, right? So we've got this variable of uh, 2.7n. This is our number side. We've got to eliminate it. The 2.7n is being added to the, um, the number expression. So we've got to do the 
inverse to undo it. So we're going to subtract 2.7 into both sides. So on the left side, we have 0 0.7 in minus 2.7 in. And then we're going to subtract the same thing from the right side. So we're minusing 2.7 in here. Now we can go ahead and simplify. On this left side, I'm going to use a calculator to do so. And we get negative 3.4. So we get negative 3.4 in. On the right side, we know that 2.7 in minus 2.7 in is 0. So we're left with 5.78 plus 0. Now we know that the these are the same exact thing. These equations are equivalent to each other, so we can rewrite it without the adding of zero. And now we've got no variable on our number side. So our number side has just numbers, but on our variable side, we still have the number negative 3.4. The number is connected to the variable through multiplication, so we need to do the inverse to undo it. The inverse here would be to divide. So we've got negative 3.4 in, we need to divide by negative 3.4 to eliminate just the number, not the variable. And we've got to make sure that we do the same exact thing to the other side. So now let's use the calculator to figure out what this number is when we divide. And we get a negative 1.7. So on the right side, when we simplify, we get a negative 1.7. On the left side, we know that negative 3.4 divided by negative 3.4 is 1 and times n. And we know that 1 times n is the same thing as n equals negative 1.7. So we've got our answer here. Real quickly, I'm going to verify this is the solution by plugging it back in to both the left and the right side since both expressions have variables in them. So when I plug in our solution for the n's on the right side, we get this in the calculator. We put it in parentheses and we get a 1.19. So the left expression simplifies to a 1.19. Now let's see if the right expression simplifies to the same exact value. So we want to put it in 5.78 plus 2.7. Whoops. In parentheses, I'm putting in negative 1.7. and we get a 1.19. So we know that we found the value that makes both expressions equivalent to each other. This is the correct solution. Our final step is to put it in set notation. So we'd open up the set. The variable here is n, so n such that n equals negative 1.7. Close the set. And so I accidentally skipped step four, which is to cite justifications for each step. So let's go ahead real quickly and, and start back from the beginning and cite our justification. So the first thing that we did here was in step two, we combine like terms, which is simplify. So we simplified. Then we rewrote it up here, right? And from this equation to this equation, we subtracted to both sides. So we used SPE, subtraction property of equality. And then from the, the equation um, I'm pointing at to the equation below it, we simplified. We went from 2.7n minus 2.7n to 0, and um, we simplified the left side as well. And then from this equation to this equation, we no longer need a right plus 0 because of the additive identity. And then from this equation to this equation, we divided both sides by negative 3.4, so we use the division property of equality. And then from this equation to this equation, we simplified. And then from this equation to this equation, we did not need to write 1 in because of the multiplicative identity. Example number two. So our first step is to identify the variable side and the number side. We've got a variable on, in both of the expressions. So let's go ahead and make the right side the variable side and the left side the number side. It does not matter what side you make, the variable side or the number side, as long as you are getting rid of the variable on the number side and getting rid of the numbers on the variable side. Our second step is to simplify if there's anything to simplify. 
Here we have a negative on the outside of parentheses that we can distribute. And remember, when we just see a negative, we know that it's actually a negative 1. We don't have to write negative 1 or 1s because of the multiplicative identity. So we multiply the negative 1 through the parentheses, and we get a negative 1 times a is a negative 1a, which we'll just write as negative a. And negative 1 times a positive 3 is a negative 3. There's nothing to simplify on the right side. There's no like terms. There are no like terms here. So now we can move on to step number 3. So we have negative a minus 3 equals negative 2a minus 2. This is our variable side. This is our number side. Let's start by getting rid of the variable on the number side. The variable here is being subtracted because it's a negative in front, so negative a. Um, the inverse of subtraction is addition, so let's go ahead and add a to both sides. So we're going to add a here, and remember when you write it in front and it's positive, you're technically adding it. And then we'll add a again here. We're adding it because it's positive in front. And now we can go ahead and simplify. So a minus a is 0. Minus 3 equals a minus 2a. That's like 1 minus 2 is negative 1, which we'll just write as negative a minus 2. And now we can go ahead and rewrite this as just negative 3 minus a, or equals negative a minus 2, sorry. And now we can... We've got rid of our variable on the number side, so now let's start focusing on the numbers on the variable side. So we've got this negative 1 in front of the a and this um, negative 2. The negative 2 is being subtracted, so we need to go ahead and get rid of this first by adding. So let's go ahead and add 2 to both sides. So negative 3 plus 2 equals a negative a minus 2 plus 2. Now we can simplify on the left side. Negative 3 plus 2 is a negative 1. And that equals negative a. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0, so we have plus 0, which we know is the same thing as just negative a. And now we can get rid of the negative. So getting rid of the negative requires us to essentially divide because the negative 1 is being multiplied to the a. So we can divide the left side by negative 1. And we'll divide the right expression by negative 1. Now we can simplify. Negative 1 divided by negative 1 is a positive 1. Negative 1 divided by negative 1 is a positive 1a. And we know that 1a is the same thing as a. Now let's go ahead and verify the solution. Get rid of this 1. Okay, so I've plugged in the 1 for the a in both of the expressions. And now we'll just simplify using our, our um, own skills. So 1 plus 3 is 4. Times a negative is a negative 4. Negative 2 times 1 is a negative 2 minus 2. Negative 2 minus 2 is a negative 4. Negative 4 equals negative 4. This is, in fact, our solution. We can go ahead and write it in set notation. And we can go ahead and justify our steps, which you, which you should be able to do um, using the previous example. So in set notation, I'm going to write open bracket. A is the variable here such that A equals 1. This is the the way that we would write our answer in set notation. All right, example number three. So here we have example number three, and I've completely worked out the entire um, problem with steps and citations. So go ahead and review it on your own. See if you can you can um, simplify this to the correct answer and, and compare it to how I've simplified it. Remember in this example, there's actually two things that you can distribute. So this is the difference um, between example two and this example three. Good luck on the problem set.